but rain, Dylan. We're going to talk about oh, that in just a second. <laughs> right now, though, let's say good morning to film critic and friend of the show, Dale Pollock. Welcome back, Dale. Well, good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Dylan. Great to be here. Good morning. Yeah, so let's talk about this show. I've been hearing a lot of mixed reviews about it, so I'm excited to hear what you think. The Perfect <laughs> Couple on Netflix. I know this was a popular show and a lot of people were watching it. I'm afraid most of them probably came away a little disappointed. I mean, it's got an interesting setup. It's kind of the perfect whodunit on a baronial estate, a really large, wealthy family uh, who lives on Nantucket Island and somebody in the wedding party turns up dead. And so this is kind of really more about class than it is about investigating a murder. It's what the rich do when someone doesn't fit in. And it does have a terrific cast led by Nicole Kidman and Lee Schreiber, both of whom are excellent in this. And then an actress I wasn't very familiar with named Eve Hewson, and she kind of steals the film because she's the odd person out who doesn't fit in. The problem is this kind of tries to be knives out, but it doesn't succeed at that. Uh... So it runs out of steam and the quote unquote surprise ending just feels forced because it's come from a plot device that sort of reeks of manipulation. And it's just more of an imitation of knives out than really an equivalent of it. So, you know, it's great to see good actors working at the top of their game. And this is an entertaining series. It's not boring. It's not terrible. I'm giving it three popcorns, but it could have been better. And I think it could have been more original and really not copied so many of the previous whodunit kind of movies. I got you. Knives, Knives Out was great. I know. I was just about to say that. And so it was interesting that you made that comparison. And it's difficult when you have something so good like that next to this. I'm sure it just, yeah. I know. I'll still probably give it a watch, though. Have you seen it, Jackie? No, I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. I think we should still give it a watch because yeah, I love that kind of. It's worth it. Yeah. It does. Cool. Okay, Dale. Thanks. It's not a waste on. of your time. Okay. Not a waste of your time. Right. Good stuff. All right. Uh, next, we have Cowboy Cartel on Apple TV+. Plus. Tell us about that one. Well, I heard good things about this, so I checked it out, and it was a kind of fascinating story of how several agencies of the federal government collaborated in bringing down a money laundering operation by the top drug cartel in the world. And the way they were laundering the money was by buying horse races, uh, horses, race horses, and then watching them win races, cash in, and then sell the horse for a lot of money. And that allowed them to launder almost a billion dollars through this one scheme. So what's fun about this four episode series, it goes by very fast. It's more compelling than you might think. And it's really fun to watch the feds descend on this with a feeling of glee that they finally nailed these guys through this scam. And so I think it's a great example of actually intra-agency cooperation in the federal government, Treasury, and the FBI. Everybody collaborates to bring down this cartel, and they do. It's successful. So this is a very short series that leaves you with a good feeling at the end. The bad guys didn't get away with it. And it shows you that for all the criticism of the federal bureaucracy, sometimes it really works and eliminates a dangerous element. Hmm. So Cowboy Cartel, not the greatest documentary series, but entertaining and leaves you with a very good feeling at the end that for once the good guys won. <laughs> good and, deal. And is it based on a true story, Dale? Completely a true story. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Very, and how many, many popcorns? All, uh, all, all the federal officials are on it. I'm giving it three popcorns. It's not the greatest thing since sliced bread, but it's entertaining <laughs> and worth watching. Okay. Sounds like it. Seems like it would be interesting to kind of see the backstory about how they did all that. I'm definitely interested in watching that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you, and especially Apple TV. Their, their stuff's always quality. <laughs> all right, finally, the Kane Mutiny Court Martial on Paramount+. Plus. I have not heard anything about this. Me either. Well, I kind of stumbled on it. It was not well publicized. And this film actually marks something. The passing of one of the best American directors of the second half of the 20th century, William Friedkin, who did The French Connection. He did The Exorcist, just a master filmmaker. This was his last film. He died before it even aired. And that's also true for one of the stars, Lance Reddick, 
who is an extremely accomplished actor who was in The Wire and in the John Wick movies. This is the last work for both of them. So that tinges this a little bit with nostalgia. But what this really is, is an interesting and innovative remake of a 1954 Hollywood movie that starred Humphrey Bogart and Jose Ferrer. And it's about a maniacal ship captain uh, who terrorizes his crew and is eventually uh, mutinied against. And this is the mutiny trial. And the captain this time is played by Kiefer Sutherland. And the whole story has been updated to 2022. So we have female soldiers, black soldiers, none of this existed in the 1954 original. And by updating it, Friedkin made it very relevant to today. So I was really startled by how effective this film was, how engrossing it was. It's not very long. It's definitely worth uh, sampling and seeing if you like it. It's, you know, I think under two hours. And I think it's one of the best films that I've seen recently on streaming. So I highly recommend the Kane Mutiny Court Martial. It's engrossing, it's suspenseful, and it's a very interesting way to update a much older story. Very pleasant surprise. Yeah, uh, four popcorns, I'm assuming, Dale? Yeah. Four popcorns. Every oh, once nice. in a while, you stumble on something that surprises you with how good it is. Love that. Yeah. Awesome. Dale, good thank deal. you so much for your time, as always, this morning and for all those reviews. Everyone at home, hear those titles one more time. It seems like all of them are pretty much worth a watch. The Perfect yeah. Couple on Netflix, Cowboy Cartel on Apple TV+, and The Kane Mutiny Court Martial on Paramount+. Plus. Yeah, I'd never heard of that one, but it seemed like it was one of Dale's favorites. Yeah. And if you enjoyed these recommend uh, recommendations from Dale, you can find them in two ways. Check out the WXII YouTube playlist, Movies in Review, or head over to Dale M. Pollock dot com.